Hello everybody, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things horror and today we are of course talking about Pearl. This isn't going to be a review necessarily. I feel like there have been a lot of reviews that have come out over the past couple of days and I agree with most of them. I loved this movie. I thought it was amazing and you should definitely go see it if you haven't seen it yet. So instead of doing a straight up review, I wanted to come on here and talk about the aspects of Pearl that I really liked, the scenes that have stuck with me that I'm still thinking about days after I've seen the film. All that being said, this review will contain spoilers. So click off this video if you haven't seen it yet and come back after you've watched the film. I mean, first off, I just have to say, Mia Goth, I mean, what a freaking star. Like, she said it in both Pearl and in X that she is a star and she has that X factor and she definitely does. I'm not really familiar with her work outside of these movies, but she has really proven over this last year that she is a phenomenal actress and definitely someone that we should be paying attention to. This movie, similar to X, is just so much fun. Like, right when the film starts, you know you're in for a good time. I loved that it started off in this very like whimsical Disney way where we're seeing Pearl on the farm and she's just skipping around and talking to her farm animals. And then she kills that goose with the pitchfork and she brings its carcass out to the swamp where her alligator lives. It's a very messed up subversive like Disney trope, like the girl that's friends with the animals. And she's holding the pitchfork over the water for the alligator to get the goose and you just have that wide shot where you see the alligator jumping up to grab the goose and it's a freeze frame and then the titles come up and it's just Pearl in these very big bubbly classic Hollywood letters. Like it's just so much fun. This film has a great sense of humor. I have to say that I loved the aesthetic of this film. For example, you have those shots when she's on her bike and she's riding past the cornfield and it's a great wide shot where you can see the sky in the background and the sky looks very ominous and you have the music and it all just felt so grand and so fantastical. And I think one of the things that does help this film is the fact that it is in the same location as X. So you as the audience member, if you've seen X, and the nice thing about this film is that you don't necessarily need to have seen X to go in and enjoy this picture. But if you have seen X, you already know the lay of the land. You know the setting, you know the house, you know the farm. So there's also a coziness to it as the viewer of like, yeah, I've been in this location. I know where these things are. I know my surroundings. And they do recreate some shots in Pearl that they had in X. Like I believe there's the scene at the end after she kills the guy at the movie theater that she slept with. Um, she has his car and she just kind of pushes it into the swamp. I'm pretty sure that was a shot in X. There are shots within the house that feel very similar as well. And it should also be noted that those shots are very much inspired by classic horror films such as Psycho or the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mentioned Ty was doing this in my X review and then it was funny watching this film because I'm teaching a horror class this semester and have been showing my students films like Psycho and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And so it was funny watching Pearl and seeing those similar shots. And it's actually brilliant on just kind of a meta level as well because Pearl is very much trying to embody the what you would call 1940s women pictures, right? These were the type of melodrama films where you would have a female protagonist in some sort of psychological distress, films like Whatever Happened to Baby Jane or Hitchcock's Rebecca. And at the time in the 1940s, those films were actually considered horror films. And so I love that Pearl is combining these two elements of both the psychological and the horror. Another thing that I love about Pearl is just how Despite being a period piece, despite taking place in 1918, it really taps into a lot of modern anxieties that we're facing today. Obviously, there's the element of the pandemic, which I thought it was brilliant that they brought in the 1918 pandemic into the story. And it's tapping into the fears around that. It's tapping into the isolation and just how maddening it can be to be stuck in your home and having to isolate from everyone around you, as well as tapping into the guilt of just wanting to go out and live your life, but knowing that it's dangerous and you could be potentially putting others at harm, putting yourself at harm. But I also love this theme that we see in both Pearl and X, and I know Ty West has talked about this in a couple interviews, but this theme around what does movies do to us? What does cinema do to us? What does looking at other people on a screen, looking at other lives on a screen, how does that affect us? And obviously with 
Pearl, her story is that she wants to be a dancer, right? She goes to the cinema, she sees these early 1918 uh, Follies films with the dancers and they look very cute and glamorous. And she wants that for herself. She wants to be the image that she sees on the screen. And to not get that, to not be that, is so heartbreaking and shattering for her. And that desire of I want to be or I want the things that the person on the screen has feels even more relevant today. We live in a time of influencer culture where it seems like anyone can just turn on a camera and they live a fabulous life of traveling and great cuisine and they're getting paid millions of dollars just to lay out on a beach and look fabulous. And yeah, it can be really disheartening when you go on social media and you see everyone that appears to be living their best life. I mean, I think we all know at this point that people only curate very specific things on their social media. But it's still easy to fall into the trap of like, everyone's life is more glamorous than mine. Everybody's doing more exciting things than I am. I'm stuck here in my boring life, not doing anything. And I feel like these are all things that Pearl taps into, right? This idea of like, if I can just get that fame, if I can just figure out a way out of my hometown, if I can just take that trip to Europe, my life will be so much better. In reality, that's probably not true, but those feelings are very much a fact of human life and they're very much a fact of human life right now. And the film also does a great job of tapping into the specific challenges of womanhood and being a woman in American society. Some of my favorite moments in this film are when Pearl is just crying and letting it all out and screaming and she has snot coming down her nose and there's nothing pretty about it. It just felt true and authentic. And I also liked how the film taps into things like, you know, look wise, you're never pretty enough. Like you're not good enough unless you're the tall, skinny, blonde woman. Just these constant contradictions of like, you're not pretty enough. Like you need to be modest, but not so modest to the point that you're a prude. The expectation as a woman to always put others' needs before your own and that you're always supposed to be in this caretaker role and that's a role that should just come to you naturally and you should be happy to always take care of someone else. And I think what the film does so brilliantly is also capturing the guilt of not wanting to put someone's needs before your own, of wanting to be selfish and just go after the things that you want. There's also the guilt of feeling like you're being ungrateful, right? The mom has a moment when she's saying to Pearl, like, you have a roof over your head, you have food on the table, why are you so ungrateful? And I thought that was brilliant because that's another very human moment where it's like, yes, you have things in your life that you can be grateful for, you can be grateful to have a roof over your head and that you have food to eat. And at the same time, recognize that maybe the life that you're living isn't what you wanted and you do want to go out and you do want more. This is a great psychological film in so many ways. Speaking of the mom, I loved the relationship between Pearl and her mother. Mother-daughter relationships can be really complicated and I feel like the film did a really great job of showing that. And again, we have another very human thing where you have Pearl who is growing up and she does not want to be like her parents, which is something I feel like probably all of us can relate to. At some point growing up, we've had the thought of like, I want to live a different life than what my parents did. But while wanting to be different from your parents, you also embody certain aspects of them. And I think we see that with Pearl and her mother, right? They're not that really different. There are two women who feel like they're stuck in this life that they're living and they want to get out. Neither of them asked for it. So I think they're very similar in a lot of ways. They just choose to express themselves differently. And obviously Pearl has leanings towards psychosis and madness, whereas the mom is trying to very much uphold her domestic responsibilities and be the proper caretaker to her husband. But I love that the film gave the mother her moment to just go crazy and scream and yell and talk about all the things that she's missing in her life. That scene at the dinner table where the mom just loses it and she's going off on Pearl and screaming at her and saying the things like, we're not that far off. You don't have your husband, I don't have mine. She's admitting to the fact that she doesn't wanna take care of her husband. She says it very clearly. I was supposed to be his wife, not his mother. And I loved that. I loved that the film gave her that moment of being able to express herself because I feel like a lesser film would have just made the mother 
the antagonist. She would have just been another run-of-the-mill villain and we as the audience would have just been waiting for Pearl to kill her. And I like that the film didn't do that. It gave the mom her moment. She became a full character in that moment. As an audience, you could sympathize with her. And it made her death all the more tragic when it did finally happen. Also, that dinner table scene when they're fighting each other, that was just like peak 1940s women's melodrama film. I, I loved it so much. I also really liked the magical realism elements with the mom at the end, right when Pearl goes into the basement and is cuddling up next to her dead body. You see the mom coming alive and she starts singing to her. I think it was a nice moment that really showed that despite everything that had happened, all Pearl really wanted was the love and acceptance of her mother. I think it added another level to Pearl's character and just made her story and her narrative arc so much richer. Speaking of Pearl's character arc, that scene at the end where Pearl is giving her confession to her sister-in-law, that was just so good. It was so well done. The fact that it was just a, what, I think a 10 minute close up on her face. What a great artistic choice to just stay on her face that entire time. I mean, we get everything. We get all the emotions as she's talking about her past traumas and her fears and her desires. It was so jarring in like the best way. I've been racking my brain since seeing that and trying to think of where have we seen something like that before, where it's just a close up on a character's face as they're talking and confessing for a good five to 10 minutes. I feel like that's something we just don't see a lot in cinema these days, especially in a time of these superhero films and action films where everything is quick cuts and getting from one scene to the next quickly. We don't spend a lot of time with characters. The only thing I'll say with that scene is I did get pulled out of it a little bit and this is not a fault of Pearl. This is actually a fault of the theater where I went to go see the film. This is a plea to my fellow theater workers. Please be aware of the sound in your theater. There was a showing of Barbarian that was playing right next door to where Pearl was. Like Pearl's giving her confession and then I'm just hearing the muffled screams of Justin Long in the background. But anyway, even with Justin Long screaming, that scene was still perfection. And speaking of close-ups, those ending credits, oh my god, I don't think I've ever seen something like that in cinema. But again, I just loved the close-up on her face as the end credits are scrolling up and it's just this very long moment and you can see her face going from trying to be happy that the fact that her husband is home to just crying and it's like you get all of the emotions that she's experienced in this film, right? The relief and joy at having her husband home, but also the sadness and grief over the fact that she's lost her parents, she's kind of stuck on this farm life that she didn't want to be on, um, the sadness and grief at losing the role of being a dancer and not having that dream be realized. It's like all of these realities are just hitting her in the face and she's trying to smile, but she's crying and it looks like like she's in pain by the end of it. I am so excited that they're doing a third film in this series. Even just seeing the little preview for Maxine that A24 put out a couple days ago, like I'm sold. I already love it. And I'm very curious what they're going to do with this film. I'm wondering if since Pearl is all about the story of a woman who wants to go after her dreams but doesn't realize them, I'm wondering if Maxine is actually gonna be the opposite because if you remember, Maxine is the main character that Mia Goth plays in X. She has very similar dreams to Pearl. She wants to go on to become an actress, to be a star. And so I'm wondering if the third film, if we're gonna get the other side of it. Are we gonna see Maxine in Hollywood and she has made it, she is a successful actress. I'm also wondering too because Obviously a main theme throughout the series so far has been this idea of the X factor, right? Of having that X factor, of having that star quality. And I feel like the idea of the X factor, like I feel like that's a very fleeting thing, especially for women in the entertainment business. When they're no longer the hit new starlet on the scene, their career can take a hit. And so I'm wondering if we're gonna see that with Maxine, if this is almost gonna be kind of like, a modern day Norma Desmond type character where we see a actress who has made it, but her X factor is starting to wane a little bit. And then what is gonna be the psychological implications of dealing with that? 
So yeah, I have no idea what's going to happen in this third film, but I am so excited. So those are just some rambling thoughts on Pearl. I would love to go back and analyze this film more deeply. Same with X as well. As of right now, I feel like X is still my favorite of the two, only because I feel like X really taps into that style and that aesthetic that I really like. But I do actually think Pearl is the stronger film from a narrative standpoint. Let me know what you thought of Pearl and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.